Test, test. All right. What's up, everyone? Nick Bell here, your Line 6 product specialist for the day. Uh, you know, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, uh, wherever you're joining us uh, from today. Um, yeah, thanks for being here today, guys. Um, so you may have seen from that image um, for our Learn with Line 6, you saw Catalyst plus a phone with a little MIDI icon in the middle of it. So you may be going, you know, what, you know, what the heck's going on here? So what I thought was pretty cool, and I've seen you know other users in the forums using MIDI controllers on their uh, smart devices, so on a phone or a tablet. You know, for me, I'm just going to be using my iPhone today um, because when we look at Catalyst, and I'm just going to transfer on over to this view here. When we think of Catalyst, obviously I'm using a Catalyst 100, and so if you have a Catalyst 100 or 200, you know we have a, a MIDI DIN connection in the back. And so you could connect a MIDI controller and honestly, HX effects, you know, pairs beautifully with um, a Catalyst 100, 200, of course, it's 60 as well. But today we're talking about MIDI. And so if you have a Catalyst 60, well, you don't have a MIDI DIN connection. And I've spoken to many customers, especially on our website, and there just seems to be a want or a need for more control. Obviously, we have you know the LFS2 two-button foot switch here, which gives you remote control switching of you know channel switching and effect on and off status. What's pretty cool is that you could go into the um, you know into the editor and you could make this effect switch be really kind of anything um, to control Catalyst. Maybe tap tempo. Maybe you want it to be just your boost on and off. Maybe you want effects and a boot in your boost off and on you can make those adjustments but for those of us that maybe want a little more control or maybe even more access to the banks because you know right here on catalyst we have six banks of presets that we can go through and you know if this is news to you if you want to you know straight from the you know uh, from the front panel of the amp if you want to you know siphon through the different banks you just press and hold the manual button and as we can see on that switch there, I'm in bank five currently. So starting from clean, that's bank one, two, three, four, five, and then six. So if you want to really control multiple aspects of your sound or even change through different banks, you know, you're going to need some sort of controller because like I said, you know, the LFS2 is great. It gives us the ability to change channels A and B. But if you're one of those, you know, users out there who, you know, want to have a little more control and switch around some more stuff, and especially if you're a Catalyst 60 user, well, this is going to be pretty cool for you. Tony Campanova, what's up, brother? Thank you so much for joining. Another product specialist in the chat. Now, granted, guys, even though we're here talking about MIDI and Catalyst and such, if you have a question about Catalyst that doesn't pertain to MIDI, let us know if you have a question about your HX stomp, whatever it may be. Um, this is just a, you know, this subject is just kind of like a placeholder for us to be here with you today, interface with you, and really answer any questions you may have. So today I'm using my iPhone. And uh, now it, it could be an iPad, it could even be an Android device. And, you know, what's, you know, cool about, you know, Android devices is, you know, all you really need is just a USB a USB-B cable to a USB-C. And um, I'm not, you know, since I'm not an Android guy, I'm not too sure if they have a uh, adapter for that. I'm sure there's a cable that exists where it's a USB-B to plug into the back of your Helix to um, a USB-C to plug into your Android device. But today we're talking about Apple devices. So what you would first need is what they call the Apple Camera Kit. Essentially all it is, it's a USB-A to lightning adapter. And so what I did is I was able to plug my USB cable into the back of my um, Catalyst. And let's imagine I have a Catalyst 60 right now where you know I don't have the ability to plug in a MIDI controller through MIDI DIN. So what we do here is we just you know connect this USB-A to lightning adapter. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna open my phone. And so right here we have the Catalyst Edit app. And then this, I know it's kind of hard to see on the phone right now, but this is an app that I got and obviously not endorsed or anything by you know this company, but I was just kind of looking through to see what's available and I was pretty pleased with finding this app. It's called a MIDI Pad. And so um, 
with this MIDI pad, I could actually send MIDI you know, control messages, program changes, and note on, all sorts of stuff through my phone. So first what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, well, let's, let's check this out. This is pretty cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this MIDI pad. And what you can do is you can create pages. And then I created this catalyst page and we could see I have, uh, you know, and I could zoom in a little bit here. We could see I have pristine clean, boutique dynamic, effect bypass, reverb bypass, and boost bypass. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to plug in with our connection. And then you'll see as soon as we plug in, the app is going to recognize that a new device being the catalyst is uh, connected. And essentially here, what I got going on is I have a pristine clean, then I have my boutique, and then I have my dynamic. And so we see these moving around on the amp. And as you can tell, as soon as I hit that button, that change happens. You know, so I'm thinking of the users who really want more control, but maybe, you know, shelling out the cash for a, a MIDI controller that's MIDI over USB. They're, you know, they're kind of hard to find. They're, there's not that many of them. And the ones that are around are a couple hundred bucks. You know, this app was $299. So for under three bucks, I have all this control. You can get a nice long, you know, uh, USB cable. And if you're in rehearsals, even in live shows, you know, you could have your phone or your tablet mounted to a mic stand or a tabletop, whatever it may be for your rehearsals, your live shows, and kind of have these presets kind of ready to go for you. And so all it comes down to is just programming the MIDI. And for those of us that, you know, are kind of maybe a little nervous when it comes to MIDI, don't worry. It's all a bunch of just ones and zeros, right? So what I got going on here, we have the effect bypass and we could see that my delay is turning on and off. Our reverb bypass, we could see that's turning on and off. And then I have my boost bypass, which we could see that turning on and off as well. So how, how did I create this? Well, first of all, let's go right over. Um, I'm just sharing my screen here. And this is just the Catalyst family, uh, Pilot's Guide. It has all the information you really need to just get going and you know find some power user deep dives and connections and so on and so forth. But at the end of these user manuals, we have the MIDI implementation table. And so here, this is where you're going to literally find what you want to do and how to program it. So let's start off with preset loading. So what I'm doing here, when we look over at my catalyst and I'm choosing a pristine clean, a boutique or a dynamic, essentially what I've done is I just created presets. Now these presets are just the stock presets in catalyst, uh, you know, that I've kind of just, you know, moved a couple things around to my liking. And so what I did is I created a couple presets, added a couple presets that are spread, spread around um, in, in, in between a couple different banks. And so when we take a look over here to do a, uh, you know, let's say load channel A of bank one, the program changes just number one and so on and so forth. So when we look over at Catalyst here, now this is the one thing about the app that I found to be a little, um, a little buggy. I'm not too sure if it's just there's extra information here or what, but every MIDI command that I program, I have to add one number. So let's take a look at this pristine clean. So this pristine clean that I have, as we can see, it's on um, channel A of bank one, which is uh, program change number one. But in this app, for some reason, I have to add an extra number. So instead of program being number one, as it should, it's number two. So I'm having to add one digit here. <clears throat> I, I, it's definitely not a catalyst thing. It's just how this app is. So that's probably one caveat to this app. Now, if you find something on Android um, or maybe something else on iOS, um, it may be a little more intuitive where you don't have to do that. Um, and especially for Android, just due to the, you know, kind of platform Android is, there's probably, you know, for all I know, the, the, a handful, if not more, apps that can do this. So literally, all I had to do was tell this pad that it's a program change for number two. Now, to be, uh, if to look over, if we want bank one with channel B, 
then that's number two. So I could just literally come in right here and let's just edit this pad. And I'm going to name it bank one, no, bank one B. And so we'll click done there and uh, I'll click add a new action. So note, if we were working with a keyboard, that would be perfect. All right, here we are, program change. Um, and then there's also um, control change, a MIDI CC. This is what we would use to, uh, you know, have certain, um, you, you know, for certain commands like turning the effects on and off or the boosts on and off or, you know, even tap tempo. So to program this, as we can see in the table, um, you know, bank one, channel B, is uh, program change number two. So, like I said, with this app, I just have to add one extra number, you know, one digit up. So instead of two, I would make it three. And that's the thing about this app too, is you kind of gotta, there we are. And then we'll go to number three. There we are. And so you can make it a toggle. Um, toggle is mainly for, would, you know, would be good for turning your effects on and off. Um, for this kind of a change, we just want pad. So now that I made my adjustments, I could click back, click done. And then now we see that it's bank one, uh, you know, preset B. I'll even change the color to purple, right? All right, here we go. So now if I could go to pristine clean, that's bank one, channel A. And then when I click down here, that's bank one, channel B, which is crunch. So as we can see, made it, you know, <laughs> it was pretty quick to make that adjustment. And and so as you can see, when we look at the effect bypass, what's going on here, and let's take a look at the table, effect bypass, let's see right here, effect bypass and enable. So that's MIDI CC 28, so control change 28, and velocity zero to 63 is off, where velocity 64 to 127 is on. So how that looks in this app, is control number 29. Now remember, I have to add one number to the control change. So this is 29, but then the off value is anywhere from zero to 63, whereas the on value is anywhere from 64 to 127. And so by making these adjustments, and then we go back, I'm able to turn that effect on and off. And the same goes for reverb and even boost. So Let's be a little interesting here. Let's let's add something else to the uh, you know to our pad here. So um, let's just look. What else can we add? Um, all right, tap tempo. Let's check that out. So uh, of course you could always you know if you have the LFS two, you can make the effect foot switch your tap tempo. Um, if you take a look at the Catalyst Edit app in global settings, um, you can make this switch control you know several different things with catalyst but like i said if you're a catalyst 60 user and you want maybe a little more control at your fingertips so to speak this is one way to do it so taking a look um so for the tap tempo midi cc is cc 64 so i'll just click edit we'll go down to our pad and i'll just give this a cool little color i'll give it a uh, you know let's let's say blue all right all right, so we're gonna change it from note to, uh, to control change. And like I said, the tap tempo MIDI CC is 64, but due to this app, um, I have to add an extra number. And so I'll just grab this uh, controller whenever it feels like reading my finger. So what was that again? That was 64, so I have to make this 65. So I'm just going across 65. So taking a look here, we got the control, um, the MIDI CC, which was 64. So now 67 to 127, that's the only velocity you need um, to be the one tap for the tap tempo. So we'll go over here, and then I'm going to make this 64 for the up value. And then um, for, and then I could just probably leave that at 128, but we'll just, yeah, we'll just leave that at 128 and see what happens. So I'm gonna take out pad two and I'm just gonna name this tap tempo. Done, back, done. So now this is our tap tempo. Let's see if it worked. Um, so we're gonna to wanna to see this button right here starting to light up. 
Oh, and there it goes. So let's say I go one, two, three, four, and we can see that that's our tempo, or one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four. So as you can see, it's reading that tap tempo instantly and immediately. And so when you think of all the things you can control with Catalyst, there's definitely a uh, decent amount of uh, MIDI commands you can have here. Um, you know, there's probably some commands here that, you know, we don't even really, uh, you know, need in the real world. Um, you know, so 0 to 27, this uh, MIDI CC for the uh, mid knob, right? So if you want to move uh, or adjust your mids or your treble bass or gain, you can do that um, via MIDI controller. But um, other than that, that um, this is just a really, really cool way of being able to get through all your different sounds in Catalyst. And so what I could do here is I could even go and add an extra row. And so now I have even more rows. And so I don't know, maybe this could be useful for you, um, you know, in a, in a rehearsal sense, in a live sense. Um, you know, for myself, you know, I'm a pretty, uh, I'm a simplest, right? You know, I'm very simple. You give me a kind of a mid game, a light, you know, kind of a clean sound and a heavy sound with some delay and I'm happy. But for those of us that are, you know, actually gigging and need more than, you know, a handful of sounds and you have a Catalyst 60, heck, even if you have a Catalyst 100 like, like mine, you know, for just a couple bucks on your um, on your smart devices, uh, you know, app store, you could definitely get some cool options at your fingertips here. So, what else? You know, what else can we do here? Um, taking a look, uh, you know, we could always, you know, maybe we want, you know, bank three. Uh, so let's do channel A and B of bank three. So I'll show you how to do that. So we'll go to edit and we'll go to a new pad down here. And I'm just going to name this, uh, you know, bank three, preset A. Now, obviously, you probably wouldn't want to name all your presets like this in a, you know, when you're doing some live stuff. But for the sake of our demonstration today, just so we can kind of, you know, keep tabs on where we are, I'm just going to name it uh, bank three, preset A. And we'll make that purple. So program change for uh, bank three, we're looking at a, uh, uh, program change five and six for channels A and B. So literally just go over here and like I said, we got to add a, uh, you know, add a number or add one digit to our command. So instead of uh, bank three being five, we're just going to put in six. And then we'll click back, done, and bank three. So right there, as we can see, bank three gives us um, kind of our chime sound. Then I can get go to edit over to new pad and then this could be bank three preset B. Bank three preset B. So we'll click done there. And then we'll go over to program change and instead of it, it should be six like I said, but we have to add a digit so that'll be number seven. And then we go back, click done. And then now that's bank three preset B. And if I were to grab my trusty guitar here, we could see that, you know, although we can obviously tell from the face of, uh, you know, Catalyst, not sure if you saw that because we were zoomed in, these changes are happening instantly. Now, granted by my uh, setup here, I'm not running any direct sound. So anything you hear is going to be through my uh, room mic. And then instantly go over to Boutique. boutique and I could turn effects off. Effects on. 
You know, and that's kind of the delay we have there. I could even do a different tap tempo. And just due to how that delay is set, that's a pretty fast sound. We can go over here to uh, dynamic and then turn our effects on. So how's that tap tempo? Oh, so we can see that that's definitely in our quarter in um in a quarter note fashion. So I can just make that even faster. I'm sure you can't hear that just due to how quiet it is. But as you can see, I can I'm starting to you know get into a groove here where I can start kind of creating my presets. And all you really do is adjust your effects, your levels, your boost, your EQs, and however they are. And then when you're happy with that, I can literally just press and hold the channel button and then press it where I want that, uh, if it, where I want this preset to be saved. And now I'm able to just kind of click through my presets. And so you're kind of just, you know, your creation at the speed of thought here, um, you know, where you can just kind of have your whole set list kind of laid out on what you need. Now, of course, we could always, you know, have a preset here and then I could create another pad where, I'm, I, where I just go through different amp models as well. We could always do stuff like that. So taking a quick look um, at our questions here, it looks like we're having a pretty easy day today. Um, so uh, MIDI pad two, um, that's also another one as well. I'm actually using um, MIDI pad. Um, well, if we take a look here, yeah, just MIDI pad. I'm not sure of MIDI pad two. Maybe that's a different version over, um, maybe that's a different version you're speaking of. Um, but regardless, you know, just having this MIDI control from a, your, a smart device is pretty awesome. Um, you know, because like I said, when you, if you have a Catalyst 60 and you're looking for a MIDI controller, um, obviously it's going to be MIDI over USB and, you know, MIDI controllers that are just strictly MIDI over USB where you have several foot switches, let's say, um, can be kind of hard to find. And the ones you do find, you know, they're not cheap. And so I was thinking, what's a great solution that I've seen others use? And that being their smartphone. And so if, so if you're just joining us, um, you know, currently, obviously I'm using an iPhone with the uh, a USB A to lightning adapter, also known as the Apple Apple Camera Kit, and so you can you know get one of these adapters on Amazon for you know ten fifteen dollars at most. I think gosh, I think I may have spent seven or eight on this one. It's not an Apple branded uh, or Apple manufactured adapter. So as you can see, you know it's not going to set you back much to uh, you know have this kind of control. And really, guys, you know, don't be afraid of MIDI if MIDI's kind of new or if it's something, you know, you haven't really delved into much because there's not a whole, you know, it, it's not it's not rocket science. You know, like I said, it's just a MIDI CC number and then a velocity range. And that gives you, um, you know, these results that we see here in the implementation uh, implementation table. Say that five times fast. So. Hope that was pretty interesting for you guys. Um, let's see what we got here in the chat. So what we have here from Thomas Moore, will the Catalyst work well as an onstage monitor for Pod Go? Which one will work best, 60 or 100? Well, Thomas, um, you know, either, either amp will be, you know, will work just fine as a monitor. Um, both, Cabinets are fitted with a 12 inch speaker. Um, however, obviously you have either a 60 watt version or a 100 watt version. Um, and as you can tell by that, 100 watts are going, is going to give you definitely a lot more push, you know, it, it, a lot more push behind that 12 inch speaker. I feel both of them would do, you know, would suit your needs just fine. But if you're working with, you know, a loud drummer, you know, maybe a big bass stack, you may want to invest into that 100 just so you have more power pushing that speaker. Um, so honestly, like if, if, if you could do the 100, I would get the 100 just due to having that extra power. But don't get me wrong, the 60 can very well hold its own. Um, you know, like, you know, the 60 can very well hold its own on any stage. Um, what's really cool, I, if, um, well, I don't have a picture here, but we could definitely take a look. 
at the uh, back panel here in the manual. Thankfully, we have this up. And where were we? Here we are. So when you take a look in the back panel, what you would do with your Pod Go is you would literally just switch this mode switch to power amp in and run it into the return. And, you know, and there you go, there's your monitor. Now, granted, it, you could have a lot of fun with your Pod Go where you could even disable cabinet modeling in your Pod Go and use Catalyst as your cabinet. And also what's really cool about this, and this is probably something you may wanna think about when it comes to purchasing a 60 or 100, um, you know, all models have a direct out. So if you're just looking for a monitor, the 60 may do you just fine. And then if you need to, you know, get even louder or send your sound to front of house, you could do the direct out, um, you know, from Catalyst, which, you know, if you go into the editor, you can choose different mics um, and different cabinet sizes for the direct out. So. Either one will suit you just fine. Obviously, the 100 is going to be, you know, a bit louder, um, you know, a bit more, a lot more power just because it's a 100 over a 60. So, but like I said, you know, to reiterate, either one will suit your needs just fine. And um, the effects loop and then the direct out as well. Um, these, these are common features among all three Catalyst models. So, the one thing that you're not going to get, you know, with your, you know, with the Catalyst 60 is this MIDI um, DIN connection here. Not sure if that's uh, important to you or not, but as you can see from what we're doing today, um, I was able, I'm able to do pretty much all MIDI control through the USB. So very good stuff. Thomas, thank you so much for that question. Very good. So without further ado, guys, um, that was my spiel for today you know, a MIDI over USB using your phone um, with a Catalyst 60 and above. Um, and oh, Thomas, you'd uh, pro probably do the direct out. Thank you. You are most welcome, Thomas. Yeah, the direct out is great. And uh, like I said, in the editor, you can choose different cabinets and microphones for your direct out signal. So like I was saying, guys, really cool that we could do all this stuff over the phone midi over usb with catalyst 60 and above so keep that in mind um again the app i was using is uh the midi pad 299 off of um, the apple app store and uh yeah hope you guys had a lot of fun and hope you know this kind of showed you something maybe a little new and show you that hey you know you actually do have options when it comes to midi control with your catalyst 60. Um, and above if you know if you're you know not in the market for like an HX stomp or whatnot because you know HX stomp paired with a one you know with any amp but especially with the 60 and the 200 with its MIDI capabilities is a match made in heaven but again you know you could definitely use your phone so thank you guys so much for joining me today before I sign off keep in mind that us product specialists Ross Bailey Tony Campanovo and myself are available um, you know, for a while now doing these Helix Skype lessons, um, although, you know, we just call these virtual lessons. Um, we do them on Zoom or whatever works out best for you. Check out line6.com forward slash events. They are free for now. Um, you know, that's a, a term you don't hear too much often these days with growing inflation. So um, definitely check these out while they are free. Will they be free forever? Who knows? But they are for now. So definitely check them out. Um, and we should be good. All right, guys. So yeah, hit us up. Hopefully we'll see you at a lesson. And like I said, they're free. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Be well, be safe. Um, I'll keep that uh, link up on the page just so you can, um, you know, check it out uh, as I'm logging off. But again, be well, be safe, have a great weekend and um, hope to see you at a another stream. Take care, guys. Thank you so much.